Okay, the vectorial nature of rotation. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Um, well, rotations have direction. Okay, uh, we know that. Um, for example, if you've got a disk, there's its axis of rotation, and it rotates like that, we say that it's rotating clockwise. If it's rotating uh, in that direction, we say it's rotating counterclockwise. Okay? So clockwise. However, um, what happens if you've got this scenario? Let's get it quickly. What happens if you've got this scenario? You've got a disk that's kind of uh, horizontal and it's rotating and you've got another disk that that is vertical and it's rotating like that so what how do we determine um, uh, whether this is positive or negative rotation what happens if you look underneath here you're gonna see so for example if you're looking down on this disk you're going to see that this disk is rotating counterclockwise. And if you're looking at this disk, it's going to, you're going to see it's rotating clockwise. However, if you look from the bottom, you're going to see that the disk is... Now, now that same disk that was ro rotating counterclockwise is now rotating clockwise. And this disk now just looks like a, a stripe. Okay, so we now we don't know what direction this guy's rotating. So the point is that in three-dimensional space, it is it is actually um, meaningless to say that something is rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. Or um, okay, so that's that's really what we're saying. Uh, in two-dimensional space, in a plane, clockwise and anti-clockwise make sense. However, when we get to three-dimensional space, we need a different method for specifying the direction of rotation. And, and how do we do that? We use something called the right-hand rule. Okay. The right-hand rule, basically, um, if we're... Let's use this example. So if this guy over here is rotating like that. You curl your fingers in the direction of rotation and your thumb points perpendicular to whatever uh, plane it was rotating in. Okay? So now we use the right hand rule and when we now in three dimensions when we're describing the rotation of this object in three dimensional space we describe it with a vector that's pointing in the direction of the thumb. Does that make sense? So for example, this guy is rotating in three-dimensional space. We assume that that vertical direction is the z-axis. So if we are describing the rotation of this guy, we can say that it's, it's rotating in the positive z-direction. Why? Because the thumb is pointing in the positive z direction. Okay? Obviously it's got a magnitude, which we'll get to in a minute, but the direction is in the positive z. What about this guy? Well, curl your fingers to follow the, this, this rotation. Where does your thumb point? Your thumb is pointing in the negative y direction. Can you see that? The negative y. So what is the direction of this rotation? It is going to be negative y. And this is, what, um, this is what this is saying. The vector represents the rotation of disk A points in the positive z direction. And so it has the form 0, 0 plus A where A is simply the magnitude of that rotation. 
Whereas disk B, disk B, I just said, is, is in the negative y direction. So it says uh, the vector representing the rotation of disk B has the form 0 minus B 0. Okay? Does that make sense? So um, now let's just look at this quickly. The right hand rule then can be used in two ways. So if we know what the rotation is, we curl our fingers in that rotation. Remember, guys, this is in some arbitrary three dimensional space. It's not, we're not just considering X and Y. Okay? So we curl our fingers there and then our thumb specifies the unique direction in space. So this is the one way. Or the other way is if a problem says this is the direction of rotation. I know it, it, it looks very weird. But basically, you put your thumb along that direction and you curl your fingers around that axis. And now you can see the direction that that object is rotating in. Okay? So those are the two ways. Those are the two ways that we can use this idea. And I just want to finish off with uh, these vectors associated with a direction of rotation are called axial vectors. Axial vectors. All right. So here we have a rotational velocity vector. And... Um, so if you put your thumb in this direction, then we know that this top is spinning like that. Um, what this means is you put your thumb in that direction means it's spinning in, uh, in that orientation there. Okay, so the direction indicates the rotation direction via the right-hand rule, and the length indicates speed of rotation.